Chargers star quarterback Justin Herbert was back at practice doing live team drills, which was absolutely great to see. And we have a special interview today. Third round pick Dayon Henley is going to join the show on today's Locked On Chargers podcast. You are Locked On Chargers, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Chargers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up and welcome into the Locked On Chargers podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Wade, joined as always by my co-host, David Drogemeyer. And we've been covering the Chargers together for seven seasons now, but this is our fifth season as a host of the Locked On Chargers podcast, bringing you your team every day. Thank you guys, as always, for making this your first listen today. And to make sure you never miss the show, go follow or subscribe for free on YouTube or listen wherever you get your podcast from. Today, we do have a big interview with Dayon Henley. Sorry for the late show, but we did have some background issues, multiple interviews going on at the same time, but we wanted the everydayers to still get to hear it. But we did get great news from OTAs because Justin Herbert was out there, not just out there, out there slinging the rock down the field, which is exactly what we want to see. This is the quote from Daniel Popper. This is not Joe Lombardi's offense, which is great to see. Also great to see JC Jackson back on the field, something we did not think we were going to get and something we wouldn't have had last night. So that's great news. And we also got Derek Ansley, the new defensive coordinator, talking about the guy we're going to talk to later with Dayon Henley, saying he looks mature and getting some early reps, which is great. But today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash lockdown NFL. When you enter the promo code lockdown NFL, they'll throw in a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti style tumbler with every order all right david so i want to get to what daniel popper put out great for the athletic if you haven't subscribed subscribed to the athletic already i would definitely recommend it the main thing i took away though david was justin herbert back in action this is something that has been a you know underlying kind of storyline in the off season so far and it was really great to see him getting out there getting acclimated to this kellen moore offense for the first time yeah this is the first time he was really actually at the command of the Kellen Moore offense, being the guy to run the show and pushing the ball down the football field, man. I think when all the information came out about how those seven on seven drills actually happened and what happened within those drills, man, you can't help but get excited. I think, you know, part of the notes saying that at least they there was five targets of 40 yards plus down the football field in the 20 to 25 reps that he took in seven on seven drills and that is just absolute music to my ears i couldn't love it anymore that is what we've been clamoring for daniel that is what we want to see push it down the field yeah this is the quote from daniel popper in the first 15 rep period i had herbert attempting five throws of at least 40 yards down the field so Let's do the math here. That's a third of the throws he did were going, you know, all bombs, 40 yards down the field. Or Mark Pokey Wilson gets a touchdown in there on against Michael Davis. It's nice mm-hmm. to see on a little rollout kind of thing from Justin Herbert. And you also have Keenan Allen catching a deep touchdown. Not the deep threat people expected to be seeing at this point. But as we saw last year, hey, he can do a little bit of stuff down there. He's hard oh, yeah. to keep track of deep down the field as well. It just takes him a little bit longer to get down there. <laughs> but, I mean, I'd be lying if I said this quote wasn't from Daniel Popper. What I like the most, which is just, this is not Joe Lombardi's offense anymore. That much is clear. Yes. Can't, you know, that's, David, at the end of last season, you know, a lot of people wanted Staley's job. And basically what we said is this, like, hey, maybe that happens. But at the very least, you cannot run it back with Joe Lombardi again. So to see, you know, Justin Herbert out there and looking healthy, I think is great because not only are we getting to see, you know, a new offense and we have a a ton of expectations of how much better it could be, but also we're seeing him getting up to speed because that is something that, hey, if he's hindered and he couldn't get to start throwing to these new guys until halfway through training camp, it's hard to imagine that wouldn't have had a big impact on how the Chargers started their season. And that's great because David... It has to be different. It has to be better. This is the biggest offseason addition, maybe outside of Quentin Johnston, right? You could argue the two that the Chargers made. So it it has to look different. It's great to see that's happening early. And I like the fact that Justin Herbert is getting an opportunity to run the offense in OTAs. Yeah. In OTAs before we get to training camp. I think that's really important to get any kind of because they're about to take a month off, right? Exactly. It had to be now. It's one thing to be in the playbook and it's one thing to be trying to, you know, do all of the off the field, all the mental work, 
but let's be real here. You need to get on the field and you got to go through the motions. You got to have those live reps. You got to program that muscle memory. It's just crucially important. You got to marry the mental game with the physical physical game. And that's why it's very important and very good news that he's on the field operating that offense in OTAs. So that by the time we get to training camp, he already has an idea of what the offense looks like and he can hopefully hit the ground running uh, fully ingratiate into that offense and be able to have command of it when training camp rolls around. Well, and the one big factor that you didn't mention, David, is shutting up all the haters. <laughs> this exactly. is something that's been going around on Twitter. I saw you quote tweeted Stephen Haglund's post about like, hey, everyone keeps talking about this down season, it's, quote unquote, from Justin Herbert, right? And it's like, oh, you mean the down season where he's missing his best weapons, playing with a <laughs> fractured rib and without his left tackle? Yeah. I guess you could say that's a down season, you know, where he went into some games with DeAndre Carter as wide receiver one. So and, and I'm very, very squad excited. squad receivers, XFL oh, yeah. receivers. Like, it, it's just unbelievable. Michael Bandy, and, 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 Jason yeah. Moore. I and mean. Everyone also neglects to remember the fact that, oh, by the way, he did it with fractured ribs, people. Yeah. Like, yeah. he was tied for eighth in the NFL in touchdown passes <laughs> with fractured ribs. Yeah, so it'll be very fun. Very, very fun to to change the narrative again, exactly, right? Like people yes. are forgetting this dude didn't throw for five thousand plus yards and forty three touchdowns only a couple of seasons ago, or had forty three touchdowns total. Well, and he right? was second so, in passing yards last year too. Right. Like, yeah, I mean, with on, with people. very very limited options. But that's not the only thing that we are looking at Kellen Moore to change. The other big part yeah. of it's going to be the running game, and it was really great to see Corey Lindsley when he got his first chance at the podium this offseason. He said, "I think overall, it's really obvious what the problem was with the offense." The run game lacked. Protection game, I think we can be better. That's what this offseason, a lot of it has been about from a protection standpoint, the communication, the simplification of everything, also just relying on our instincts more and helping everybody out as much as we can. I feel like we're making a lot of improvement even right now. The run game will take accountability for that. I'm sure you could pick apart a bunch of different reasons, but ultimately up front, that's something we take pride in. And it's such a great point, David, because... Yeah. Yes, the scheme has to change. It was dry. He also talked about like they didn't have any staples. They didn't have yeah. any go tos, right? They didn't right. have a standard that was. They set. had good plays. They didn't have good schemes. Correct. Like that that was the problem here. Which is huge. But at the end of the day, it's these dudes who are going to go out, have to go out there, be together, get that chemistry, and go out and perform. Yeah, and he and he, he goes on to say it's like, hey, we're 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 old linemen. We we want to run the football. Like we want that to be part of our identity. We want to impose our will on the defense. We want to be able to say, hey, we're going to run the ball. You know we're going to run it, and we're going to do it anyway, and we're going to go through you. Yeah. That is the mentality you want your offensive line to have. And also, I think I just absolutely love the continuity of this group. They're going to be able to stay together for multiple years. They can feel comfortable that they have the guys that are going to be playing the offensive line positions for you so they can get comfortable, build that chemistry as quickly as possible, and go out there and maul dudes because that's what you need to see after the last two down seasons running the football. Absolutely. I mean, you know, since Justin Herbert has taken over, the run game has been inconsistent at best. 2021, at best. they were efficient, you know, maybe middle of the pack, but it has not been a strength. It hasn't been something this team can lean on. They've won very few games on the back of their running game. And I think when yeah. you look at this offensive line and having them all locked up for the next three seasons, I love it. And, and the thing yeah. is, is like, unless Trey Pipkins is going to be worse than he was when he was battling through a sprained MCL all last season, Hard unless to Zion that. Johnson as a rookie who was still pretty darn good gets a lot worse or Jamari Sawyer has some sort of Matt Filer level regression, this should be a good group. And, and like pass protecting was already kind of a strength for them anyways. Yeah. Now if they can get the run game going, look out. You know, it's a formidable offense. It's a and little bit of help for Justin can do it. Herbert. They got dudes that can do it. For they sure. absolutely have dudes who could do it, and especially when your season ends, the way their season ended last season, you know, running for negative yards in the second half and being up 27-0 to zero and not being able to put that game away, not being able to run the football, it has to be a huge storyline of this offseason, and it's going to take a better scheme, which we feel like they have, but at the end of the day, it's going to be the players that have to go out there and do it, but I do have to get into this, David, because we did see on Friday a very important name back at practice, which is pretty remarkable, <laughs> I mean, considering his injury. J.C. Jackson out there already on the on the field with the team, at least doing drills on the side right now, which is insane considering the injury he had. And we also got some news from Derek Ansley about Jasir Taylor looking good at this point, and also the guy we're going to talk to later, Dayon Henley, looking mature at practice so far. So we're going to get into that after this. But I do need to tell you guys, 
about bird dogs. My new favorite shorts, the shorts that it's hard. You have to remind yourself, hey, you got to take them off every once in a while because you don't really need to. The pants come with built-in liners. You don't even need to wear boxers. You can go commando and still get the security from your shorts. And the best news is they look great. That's important as well because my wife doesn't let me wear shorts out to a lot of things. Bird dogs are the exception. You're getting something that's stylish. You're getting something that most importantly is so comfortable. I did something for the first time with my bird dogs the other day. Wore them to go play golf. These are a golf game changer. You get all the mobility while still looking great in your golf shirt with your bird dog. I mean, you can get the bird dog polo if you want as well and just go for the entire look. But the shorts are crazy. The joggers I wear all the time. They are so, so comfortable. They are changing the game. And since you guys listen to this show, we have a little promotion going on. If you guys go to bird dogs, dot com slash locked on nfl and enter the promo code locked on nfl you get a free yeti style tumbler it looks like this my drink has been cold for like 17 hours that's another plus of it but you guys can get that since you listen to this show promo code locked on nfl to get that yeti style tumbler if you go to birds bird dogs dot com slash locked on nfl you won't want to take your bird dogs off but you have to sometimes we promise you David, we got to hear Derek Ansley talk, and he talked about a couple of players we were definitely wondering about. But I do have to start with the biggest news coming out defensively at practice on Friday, which was J.C. Jackson, Mr. INT, back on the field. There's a lot of storylines here, David, because it's not just about him coming back healthy. It's him coming back and looking like the player that got him the richest cornerback deal, basically, of all time, right? So this was insane to see. He had a ruptured patella tendon week seven against Seattle that is a potentially career ending injury for some people making it back is a, a you know something on its own where it's just like you should be congratulated for that because he's made ridiculous time doing this what a sight to see him that was not something we expected to see this week at all i was just blown away i was flabbergasted when i saw those videos of him on the practice field doing some agility drills I did not believe it. And I think, you know, ever since the injury occurred, you see all the videos of him working out and rehabbing and, and, you know, those all look good. And, and it's almost like it's not real. Like that's almost sure. make believe until you're on the field. Well, hello folks. We're seven months <laughs> after a very, very, very serious injury. And he is already back on the field. That is a testament to his will, his heart, his, his absolute just refusal to give the up dog. the dog the dog in him is the reason why he is back on the field for otas let alone yeah. training camp otas i think you have to take your hat off yeah to mr jc jackson for working his tail off to get back and help and try to return to being mr int well, because without him, it's just the depth in that room looks super questionable, right? You it have does. to see Taylor, Dean Leonard behind him, maybe Michael Jaquette, and maybe one of these UDFAs come out and does something. But it still looks like a room with not a lot of experience behind your big three. But when you don't know if the biggest of those big three is going to play at least production for his career, it makes everything a little bit more difficult. But the good news is, is that Jasir Taylor is looking really good in practice as well. And that kind of changes the complexion of things on the defense. If he can come out after getting some playing time late in the season, if that dude comes up and is a sixth round steal, wow. I mean, what is that? I mean, that the depth that you get there now, especially if JC Jackson can come back, it goes from looking like a very questionable spot on this team to one of the deepest parts of this team, if it all works out that way. And this is what Derek Gansley had to say about him. He's mature past his age. He's a very quiet kid, very observant. He understands the big picture. He's working hard just like the other stars are working hard. That is going to be an interesting battle once we get to camp. What battle is that? You know, that's the one thing I took away from that, too, is just kind of like, who is he battling with, right? Is it the next corner on the field? Is it him just in the slot? If he is in the slot, who is he battling it out with within the slot? But I think the big picture here, David, is, hey, this dude needs to kind of mature at a faster pace. This dude has to play a role in this Chargers 2023 defense, especially with injuries and everything. This is a great sign. It is. It's a, it's a fantastic sign. I, I mean, I, I, honestly, I think you can already look at Jasir Taylor and what he has already brought to the table uh, from a special te team standpoint and what he did last year on, on the defense as already getting value out of a sixth round pick. I, I mean, I, I think you can say that right away. If that's so, all he was, it would be a good pick. You're right. Exactly. 100%. And so right now you're sitting here with him being looked at as a potential starter for you 
like that is tremendous like yeah. that can al almost it's the start of changing the trajectory of late round picks for the chargers like continuing that trend of getting value where they're in, the, in drafts past there was a lot of those what were you doing type of yeah. uh, of decisions with those late round picks that absolutely had no contributions to the chargers whatsoever so right. the fact that he is stepping in here already getting play on defense making some plays and then positioning himself to potentially be your slot corner i mean I, I think you have to be really really excited and really happy that you're in that type of situation i know could he be the next desmond king that's a question right guy who comes in slot fifth and sixth round picks respectively yeah who knows you know who knows what's going to happen there but i do think that you you don't have to hit on every single draft pick right but no. what kills you is when you have a ton of draft picks that aren't giving you anything right exactly not just not you know playing super well or being above average it's like you need to at least find a couple of average level players to come step in and unfortunately yeah. for telesco it's been super boomer bust you're either an right. outstanding player and yeah. you're justin herbert and you're joey yeah. bosa and you're derwin right. james or rashawn slater or you're or you're the Dylan other Cantrell. Yeah, exactly. You're Dylan Cantrell, you're Tevin Reese, you're Marion yeah. Grice. We're going yeah. back. Right. But yeah. like that's there's too much hit or miss there. This is another one where it's like, hey, Jamari Sawyer, right? Maybe right. Jordan McFadden potentially. You, right. You, you, you just know, need you, to hit some more singles and doubles, exactly. man. You just more need singles. to hit some more singles and doubles. That's all. Then you're Tony Gwynn and you're Hall yeah. of Famer. But there you go. He did also talk about Derek Ainsley, the new defensive coordinator, about Diane Dayon Henley, who we're going to be talking to after this. And it was really great to see what he said about him, David, because he said he's getting a lot of reps out there because of injury. Some guys are hurt. He has stepped right in. Being a young guy, you wouldn't know it because he has jumped in there and grabbed the bull by the horns. He's really working hard on and off the field, staying late, coming early. He's putting in the time and learning his craft. And I think this is invaluable, David. This is a guy that starts, you know, maybe sixth on the depth chart because of all the guys they have in that room right now between Kendricks, Kenneth Murray, and Eamon, and Nick. And, you know, it, it, there's it's just you, you start at the bottom, right? But because of these injuries, he's getting out there. And he's also a guy who spent more time in college, right? This dude had like yeah. seven years in college, COVID years, injury years, stuff like that. You should yeah. ask him about that. But yeah. this is great. Like, this is good news. If he is going to have a chance to potentially take that spot over from Kenneth Murray, which I'm still not convinced they're going to give him, I think this is a huge step in that direction. I think Dayon Henley is just focusing on what he can control and taking advantage of the opportunities that he has given, that are the opportunities that are in front of him. He can't control whether those guys are on the field or not, but they're not. So he has the opportunity to go out there and shine and show what he is capable of doing because inevitably the Chargers are going to be in a spot where he's going to have to probably step on the field and provide some production. I mean, that's just yeah. going to happen. Yeah. So, I mean, this is the time for him to show the coaches that he's committed, that he wants this, that he is going to put in all the extra work that he can. And when he gets those opportunities, he's going to make the most of them. And it might be too much pressure to put on a third round pick, right? It might be asking too much, but like, I sure. think at very least he has to be the next linebacker on the field. 100%. Whether that's for Eric Kendricks, whether it's for Kenneth Murray, they're different styles of players, obviously, but like he has to be that next guy you hope by the yes. end of training camp. And I mean, he has a lot of respect for the guys in front of him as we hear in this interview but he at does. the same time like you can tell he's hungry he needs to get out there Absolutely. he's probably going to be a special teams phenom early i would think if which he knowing. takes a lot of pride in he takes a exactly lot of pride in he does and he talks about that and it, the other news is is that the tuli tui polo two rivalry is definitely still on you asked about <laughs> all the pac-12 players and he ended up you know bringing up that name specifically so it was great to hear that and also where the Power Ranger nickname comes from. He feels like he is a Power Ranger out on that <laughs> field. And he also talks about just, you know, what parts of his game he's excited to bring to this Chargers defense. The reason it's not that at the beginning of the show is because there was another interview going on. There's definitely some background noise, to say the least, right? There's um, some confusing audio in the background. But we wanted the everydayers to be able to listen to this because we might not be able to have him on again. He had some really, really good answers, and he's such a good personality. It's and a player. phenomenal interview, guys. Very, like, it yeah. really is. A it lot is. of great it, information there. David did a great job with it. I was at work yesterday, but we wanted to make sure we got it out to you guys, even if it's a little late. So take that and, you know, into consideration. Keep that in mind. We wanted to figure out a way where we could still get it out to you guys, unlike the Chris Rum video because of the audio there. So here it is. Bear with us. We appreciate the everydayers knowing, hey, we're just committed to getting you guys the best prospect or best players from the Chargers as we can on the show. You know, so we take a lot of pride in it. We hope you guys still enjoy the interview anyways. But coming up right after this, rookie third round linebacker, Dayon Henley.
All right, guys, here it is, the very, very special guest that I teased a little bit on social media. I am here with the Chargers 2023 third round pick linebacker Dayon Henley. Dayon Henley, thank you so much, man, for giving us some of your time. How are you doing? Man, I'm doing great, man. So good to be on the show, man. Let's get it. Heck yes. Yeah. So during your draft day video with all your friends and family around, you must have said bolt up about a hundred times. How cool was it to get drafted and find out that you get to stay home in LA? I mean, bro. So just immediately the, the rush of emotions, the, the happiness, the joy, even, even just like the relief all hit me all at once and like you said i said both up a million times it's pretty much stamped this is it's a part of me now and all of that emotion kind of just i had bottled up the relief to be home just made it just that much more better when it exploded all out i'm like i'm home like man i'm get to play for the best team in the la uh, you know I'm think it's part of it. Also, yeah. baby, and that's to do it for my family everybody starts cooking i mean it's got i mean it's a dream come true already to to make it to the nfl but it's another thing entirely to be able to be able to play your nfl career and start it in your hometown of la i mean that's amazing but hey one of the most excited chargers players when you got drafted was safety derwin james how has that relationship started and how excited are you to be able to play with him immediately out the gate like straight big bro little bro mentality uh he takes me under his wing this man knows the game better than anyone i've ever played with and some almost near most of the coaches that i've had like he knows this game well and it's because of how versatile he is he he is like the epitome of versatile you know because we get to see it we get to yeah. see him play every position on defense it's not like he says it he does it so to have somebody like that in my corner and I can call big bro and he 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 lives to that standard mm -hmm. every day and anything he does it's I mean dream partnership man dream partnership I just can't wait to get on the field you know when my time comes if I get that opportunity to do what I can because I have vets that's right in front of me that are dogs you know EK K9 like I look up to a lot of dudes in my room so it's like this team is just I'm ready to go. Uh, I mean, Heck, I yeah, man, we can't wait to, to see you on the field with, and play with Derwin. But speaking of, of you on the field, man, you stuffed the stat sheet: 200 tackles, five interceptions, over four sacks. Just, just your last two seasons in college. How much pride do you take in being able to affect the game in multiple ways? I mean, it's all about production. And if you love this game the way I love this game, is you want to play it, you get on that field, you got to make something happen, man. You got to make something happen. It's not about just being a body on the field. It's about being a part of the chain, being a, being a difference maker in the game. And you can kind of just slip into the background of just doing your assignment. And that's how you're supposed to play the game. But then you can, you can be a clutch player within that, you know, be within the scene and still be a clutch player. And that's kind of like what I kind of harp on. I as a player, is like make the plays when they matter, make the plays when they count, and make the plays that you're supposed to make. You know, the ones that did this right, studied this right, you know, that is coming, make it happen. And that's just, you know, that's where the production comes from. Uh, tremendous coaches and excellent teammates. Like, gotta give them credit. Absolutely. I mean, they're all part of the journey for sure. I mean, the Chargers, they have always covet versatility and they covet linebackers that used to be safeties. I mean, it's yeah. kind of their archetype. You were a wide receiver and a safety in college before settling in at linebacker. What advantages do you think you gained having learned these different positions? Just being able to see the field from both perspectives and not that I'm in the game and I'm seeing like from the receiver standpoint, it's just, you know, watching the film. It yeah, helps. it helps a lot watching film just being like able to know that if uh, they're in a three by one set and I have you know a tight set that I know I'm probably going to get across. It's just just different dynamics that you can probably pick up just from being on that side of the ball that I use a lot to help me process mentally when I'm preparing for the next team and I'm just looking forward and looking ahead. So that right there, I think that. Uh, the Chargers organization as a whole saw that within me because that's something that I wanted to, to prove to the team as well. And I'm here to, to make sure that sticks and make sure that stands true.
Absolutely. Um, getting getting to something a little bit more fun here. The Ranger is definitely one of the most unique nicknames that we've ever seen for a Chargers player. It's obvious that you love, you know, you have a love for the Power Rangers, but do you think that nickname is in any way symbolic of the way that you play? Oh, I mean, definitely. Def one is definitely unique. Uh, I've not heard anyone else <laughs> be called the Ranger on a football field. And with the uniqueness, I think that it stands out just because how – me when i touch that field the type of energy that i have uh the excitement that i, I hope to bring i can't say that i do i just hope sure. to bring uh, that excitement it's all just in that morph you know what i'm saying yeah. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> man you turn into that hero you morph into that you feel me you put the mask on it's just like one of the only superheroes well, not just like the group of heroes where it's like they put the whole the whole suit on and they're in power, you know. So, and this is me talking deeply about the power range. You would have thought, you know. I love it though, but I mean, it's kind of like you know, when whenever you get on the before you get on the football field, man, you put those pads on, you you get your your headbands right, you get your jersey looking good, and then you go out there on the field, and when you look good, you play good, man. I think that's kind of a little bit of what that is too. Sports time, man. But uh, one of your one of our one of my favorite parts uh, when I was watching some film on you when the Chargers drafted you was yeah. how consistent you were as a tackler, and I mean I really really love that. It got me really fired up. What are some of the parts of your game that you're most excited to be able to show off at the next level? I want to say that it's just being the athlete that I am, uh, sideline to sideline. My whole motto is is get to the ball. Wherever the ball yeah. is, I need to be there. Maybe that's because I was on offense, you know, and, and naturally we have the ball. <laughs> but now that I don't have it, it's, it's that envy, you know, that I want it. So for me, to get to that ball is the biggest thing. So as far as making tackles, that just comes from my one-on-one -on -one mentality. That, yeah. that mono -e mono is like, if I lose, if I miss this tackle, then he beat me. You know, I don't even, yeah. anyone with a competitive mindset don't want to lose, especially if right. I have that chance every play to have that battle. So that's kind of where that comes from. So, if I miss a tackle, don't worry, coaches. You ain't got to beat me up. I'm already whooping myself. Don't worry, fans. You ain't got to beat me up. I'm already whooping myself. And that's why I want to limit those because I want to yeah. limit that that mental, you know, the mental errors because they can pile on. You know? so, sure. Well, and, and you got to have that next play mentality, right? You can't let one bad play roll over and turn into two, turn into three, and then all of a sudden you got a bad game. I and mean, you got to got to re, you know, flush that out, and you got to keep going. David, but another you aspect, like coach, you yeah, like coach, man. come on, David. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, another aspect of your game I know you take a lot of pride in is your special teams, and then something yeah. you really excelled at. We talked about how un important and underrated special teams are here on the show. Is that something that you think you can come in and make an impact? on? On right away that's what i'm hoping to do that's what i'm hoping to do i i never like to look too far ahead and say what i'm going to do but i can say that you know the effort and time that i'm going to put in to make that happen is what i'm, I'm like it's happening right now because when it comes to special teams it's overlooked but yeah. it's literally the probably the most unique and made most major phase of the game of football because it takes defense and offense and combines it into one yeah. over the span of the whole field. Kickoffs right. are 50 yards, you know, like you're always going to have a 50 yard, like, you know, kickoff punt can be however long. It could be an 80 yard punt, you know, so like these plays are unique to the game and they're overlooked because it's only like a split second. It's not back to back to back. And yeah. For me, I find my love and impact in that because one, it, it just helps the offense because it's like we can help affect the field and it helps the yeah. defense because we can help affect the field. So with that mindset, I hope to take that approach to this team and, and help in that manner. And I've already told my special teams coach, like, use me, bro. Like, let me, yeah. let me be everywhere you, I can be to make something happen. Yeah, well, and especially with the Chargers, because, I mean, it's a very common theme. When guys go out there and they show out on special teams, very soon after, they find themselves playing on the field on offense and defense. So, like, that could be your pathway to get on the field if you don't get there right away. But I think we're going to wrap things up with a little bit, uh, something a little bit fun here. There's been some videos out there between you and uh, new teammate Tuli Tui Pelotu going back and forth about the Washington USC robbery. I, I think it's going to be heating up on Saturday when all you with all you Pac-12 guys on the roster. 
Well, let, me, let, me, let me tell you a little about Tony. He doesn't want any smoke with this guy. Oh. Hey, he gets you the thumb. This guy. <laughs> But that's my dog, and we we always we always rap, we always talk, just mess with each other. But man, he knows that I'm a coog. He knows that he's always welcome to be a coog. <laughs> who wants to be a Trojan willingly? Obviously, ah. I didn't. You take like that transfer portal history you track with me. I didn't choose to be a Trojan. I wanted to be a coog. <laughs> he, he like he loves to talk about it, but I'm like, bro, y'all didn't win the Pac-12 championships. So. Uh oh. Oh man! <laughs> Standing right next to each other. Dayon Henley want to smoke. Uh, you better watch out, Tuli. But hey, Dayon, thank you so much for giving us some of your time today, man. I really appreciate it. Can't wait to see what you are able to do for the Chargers here in your rookie season. Oh man, let's do it. Boats up, baby. Boats up. Boats up. Appreciate you. Wow. Well, I thank you guys for bearing with us. Obviously, we know, right, the audio wasn't as good as we wanted it to be, but we'll get it cleared up going forward. And we want to just keep continuing to bring you guys the biggest guests that we can possibly get on. And I feel like, you know, we're definitely keep working towards that, you know, situation because we've had some big guests, the biggest guests we've ever had on this year. We appreciate the everydayers for you guys knowing that we always will be committed to that. But that is going to wrap it up for today's show. We will be back with you guys on Monday. The great news is Chargers mini camp goes next week very very excited for that we will be here talking about it for you guys to make sure you don't miss it go subscribe or follow for free on the locked on charges youtube channel and also follow us for free or listen wherever you get your podcast from and you can also find the show every day on all of our social media you can hit us up on twitter at locked on lac you can find me on twitter at dan talk sports and david drugmeyer on twitter at dro talk sc you can also find us at locked on chargers on instagram and our locked on chargers facebook page we are excited the last kind of little bit of off-season stuff going on next week that we're going to be getting into with you guys. But thank you guys so much, as always, for being everydayers and being here with us today. We'll be back with you on Monday. Until then, take it easy and go Bolts.